Right, so the Met Police have come out in the aftermath of the entirely justifiable criticism laid at their feet over their conduct prior to and during the coronation, saying that they felt under intense pressure to crack down on protesters. It has been reported that the Met have said they were told in no uncertain terms that anyone who could be seen to damage the look of the coronation and the reputation of the UK as billions watched worldwide should be arrested. It's a very firm instruction that was passed down, and indeed this is what we saw. People standing, holding banners up, were arrested. People who had liaised and organised peaceful protest, arriving with placards, were arrested. In fact, 64 arrests were made on that day, also including Night Star staff supplying rape alarms during the night before the coronation. And at least one journalist, Rich Felgate, who was making a film about Just Stop Oil and was standing next to just Stop Oil protesters filming their arrest and wearing a press pass ended up having that ripped off him by the Met before being put in cuffs himself. It's a little wonder some of those involved in being detained, notably Graham Smith of Republic, are now considering legal action due to their treatment, due to the fact they caused no disruption. They hadn't even got their van unloaded before they were swooped on by the Met. Abuse of the new powers? Oh, I reckon so. There's a legitimate case to be had here. The police clearly have... No idea at this moment in time, due to the vagueness of this rancid policy of how to balance protest, which is a fundamental democratic right, a human right, with the new powers that they now have. So who leaned on the Met so heavily? Who is in a position to do that? Who can put the pressure on? Whose bill got signed into law by old sausage fingers right before he had that ridiculous crown stuffed on his pointed head? leading to the absolute scenes that we saw. All roads lead back to Suella Braverman, and the Home Secretary, don't they? She tweeted out on the 2nd of May, the day her public order bill got given royal assent, that the public order bill has received royal assent from His Majesty the King. Those intent on causing disruption with guerrilla protest tactics and other criminally disruptive acts will now be met with the appropriate penalties. It really is vague generic language, and quite how many people turned up in camouflage to undertake anti-monarchist guerrilla tactics. Well, surely that meant anybody who had their face painted with red, white, or blue on their day. Clearly that was the camouflage going, wasn't it? Maybe they should have all been taken in for questioning. Language like this is open to interpretation and open to misinterpretation, but combined with having the hard work put on our police forces, which shouldn't ever happen, nobody should ever be told how to do their job except by senior supervisors, and certainly not by a clueless entity constantly tripping over our own fascistic sympathies like Leaky Sue Braverman. Yet this is what the Met are now claiming it would seem. They know their already piss-poor reputation has been hammered even further. They know they've screwed up as far as public relations go. They're now saying they felt they had no choice. It all implies they were acting on the direction of Braverman. Who else could it have been? But her heavy-handedness, meted out by the Met, has ended up being the big story. We expect the police to keep us safe. Already, far too many people do not trust them to do that, especially the Met, which is functionally unfit for purpose after the KC report. And all of this scandal and shamefulness, the images of protesters being peacefully walked to police vans, are the ones burned into our minds now. Not the hilariously ill-fitting garb Charles and Camilla were sat in, or Penny Mordant looking like a cross between an extra on The Handmaid's Tale and the Tudors holding that ridiculous flaming sword. Braverman's heavy-handed, hard-right approach to dissent, as all this points to her doing, overshadowed the event even for, I'm sure, many people who were into this spectacle. Charles himself might have signed this bill into law ahead of his big day, but is this what he wanted? I wonder if the attention was taken off of him after all. The shine taken off his overpriced big day that we're all paying for. I can't imagine he'd be too happy about that. There needs to be an investigation into what happened here, but any investigation cannot have Suella Braverman anywhere near it. Surely she's got to be complicit in what Met senior figures are reportedly saying is true. 64 people arrested and then just released after the event, as if it's all okay now. It isn't okay. They were detained because somebody didn't like the look of you. Well, I'm screwed every time I leave the house then. Protest is the right of each and every one of us. The public order bill demonstrated on the day of the coronation being enacted is clearly a threat to that right. It was no coincidence, in my view, despite government claims that it was rushed through royal assent as fast as it was to ensure protesters were clamped down on in the most draconian, hard and fast way they were by design. The buck stops with Braverman. Expect others to end up being the fall guys, but don't accept it. Meanwhile, Braverman today will be cheering the arrival of her prison barge in Falmouth for a refit. 
I used to work at Falmouth Docks as it happened. I served my apprenticeship there. But I'll be damned if I'd have agreed to work on the evil flaming thing. She's not fit for office, and neither is any government happy to sit alongside someone like her. Thanks for watching. If you appreciated this video, please do hit like and subscribe. Leave a comment and hit the notification bell too so you don't miss the next one. Also look out for me on social media and other interesting stuff by clicking on the link tree link in the comments below. And I will see you next time. Cheers, folks.